Yo, what's up, guys? I'm back with a brand new track. Yes, indeed. And without further ado, as opposed to ado, because I'm a fancy Frenchman and I like saying things wrong, like I did when I was a kid. I legit thought it was ado when I was younger, as opposed to ado, which is what it actually is. Anyway, it's 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, or is it Aegis, or is it Aegis, or is it Aegis? I don't know what it is. Never heard it actually said out loud. It's published by Atlas and in turn published by Sega. And it's developed by Vanillaware. I love Vanillaware. I've played, you know, Mermasa the Demon Blade through legit means. And I've also uh, played um, Odin Sphere a little bit, although it doesn't run very well on legit PS3 hardware. As well as Dragon Crown it doesn't run very well on that legit PS3 hardware. I want to play Guilty Crown, which is illustrated by the same artist who does all the main art for Vanilla War games. But speaking of art, the art in this game is great, but the problem is, the problem with the art is that's mostly just a uh, visual novel. The gameplay primarily being like this grid-based, non-visually impressive tactical game. If you've ever seen that Sung One video about like games that have radically different gameplay and, and visual style as opposed to like, you know, like the one where he's like playing with the little dots, like doo -doo 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 -doo. it's kind of like that. I watched the Yahtzee Crow Shot video on it and it's really accurate. Like I, I was surprised by how, how right he got it. But I guess I shouldn't be because he's a legit great reviewer. This game is actually pretty freaking around. Bad. Yeah, although on um, the story is insane, batshit crazy. I don't expect it to get any less uh, sane. Overall, I would say uh, 13 Sentinels is a great game. I haven't got very far in it, but that's going to be a common trend throughout the video is that I'm not going to be having played very many of these games to completion um, or any of them at all, actually. There's like weird, creepy sex shit. Like, like for some reason, they're naked. It's, it's really weird. I don't like it. But anywho, oh, and speaking of that, Grim Grimoire is a game that I plan on owning on Switch at some point. I would love to own it, but I, I just unfortunately cannot at, at this time because there is no English port yet of the game on Switch. Switch, and uh, I'm not gonna play it through legitimate means. Uh, and I'm gonna wait for the physical to come out in America, which is like this May, if I'm not mistaken. So you're gonna notice that there's a lot of Japanese and Asian releases that I bought. And I have another one coming in, it's Skyward Sword. It's a Hong Kong release straight from Hong Kong. So I've decided to record another part, and this part is covering Astral Chain. It is a platinum game and believe it or not before recording i thought i only had one in this collection of games but turns out it's actually three i own three platinum games now that's not all the platinum games on switch but that's a decent chunk of them you know i don't own bayonetta 1 2 and 3 and i don't own the wonderful 101 but i own two others and you're gonna have to find out which ones they are so there you go astral chain is a great game it's not exactly your traditional sort of beat em up with because of the whole chain element but it is your typical platinum of affair otherwise if you take that out of consideration because you can play the game without out entirely relying on the chain you know I'm just gonna have a bad time uh, I've customized quite a bit I did all the training I did very well and uh, it's a fun game uh, I'm of course uh, playing as the girl because uh, girl power am I right <laughs> anyway <laughs> sounds like I don't like girl power I I'm okay with girl power I don't know why the hell I <laughs> said it like I don't like girl power that's funny I hate Hideki Kimiya though He's a fucking see you next Tuesday. He's so awful. I hate him. That guy is a piece of shit. So any sort of sort of haha, it's so funny that he blocks people and that he only speaks in Japanese despite the fact he knows English and all that. So no, it's it's not clever, it's not cute, it's annoying, he's a fucking asshole. That's enough for any about Hideki Kimia. On to the game. The game itself is uh, graphically very good. I am actually surprised by how graphically good it was. Review said it was kind of fidelity wise not that impressive. But it basically looks like a PS3 game, a late PS3 game slash Xbox 360 game. And in my opinion, that's just fine. I mean, if you can play that portably, that's wonderful. I don't really care all that much about it not looking the visually the best. Although, Switch could use a refresh because there's some games that just don't perform the best and never will perform the best. Okay, next game up is Astro Aqua Kitty Possum Collection. I know, possum, yuck. Terrible pun. But it's uh, developed by Tiki Pod, and unfortunately, if you look right here, 
It says limited run. I know, I broke my promise. I said I'd never buy from limited run again, but here's my caveat, okay? Hear me out. It's basically impossible to boycott things nowadays, especially considering some of my favorite games get physicals through limited run. So what I'm going to do is I'm not gonna order from their website ever again. I'm not pre-ordering anything, even on Amazon or Best Buy or whatever. When it comes to Switch games, I've learned my lesson. I'm not using it ever again, but I will if a game is on Amazon or Best Buy and is a decent price and it comes relatively quickly, I will order it off of those websites, but I will not buy third party, you know, resellers. I know that's not really much of a boycott, I guess. Uh, Astro Aqua Kitty is uh, a, a dual pack with Aqua Kitty UDX, which I own the original. It was called Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender. I got it on Humble Bundle years ago. I'm talking like almost 10 years ago at this point, it has to be. So yeah, it's probably like eight or seven since I've played the original. The music is quite wonderful. It's like some of the best music I've ever heard in an indie game. I'm probably using some videos and you might not even have noticed. The original Aqua Kitty game is a, is a Defender clone. That's why the subtitle in the original was Milk Mine Defender. And uh, yeah, I played quite a bit of it on PC and I actually played more of it on uh, Switch than I have the actual game in question that I wanted this uh, package for, which is Astro Aqua Kitty. They describe it on the box as an all new action RPG shoot 'em up adventure. But to me, it's kind of like something similar to if you've ever played Pixel Junk Shooter. I haven't gotten very far in that portion of this collection. It's, it's good, it's good, but more importantly, Manual Squad Hype! Yep, we're bringing it back, baby. First one of the bunch, and there's gonna be quite a few. Maybe not quite a few, but there's gonna be a decent amount, trust me. So yes, um, this is the first of a few Manual Squad Hype moments. Be sure to tally them and uh, give me your results at the end in the comments if you, if you can. But you won't, I know you won't. This is this will get barely any views at all. That's okay, I don't care. I don't do these for uh, views, I do these for fun, because I'm a b b b b boss Oh, and the graphics are nice, I, uh, but I mean, for the most part, you know, 2D games are pretty good looking. There's a few exceptions, like, hell, there's some I featured on my channel, like, uh, what's the name of the game? Draw Rider, which is literally just stick figures, but that has its own appeal in, in, in a way. I'm not much of a visual fidelity kind of guy, except for if it runs like ass and if it looks like shit. That's the only time I'll criticize something. If it, if it looks good enough and if it runs just fine, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I've become more picky over the years simply due to the fact that uh, I've grown up you know and realized how much effort it takes to make a game and that some shortcuts were made in certain games and that publishers just rush shit out the door and it pisses me off. Next up is yet another Japanese game. That's right it's NTC or sorry NTSCJ. That's what we're talking about. And it's Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, everybody! Put the actual title on screen because it is in Moon language, so I don't know what it actually says. This is actually a remaster or a repackage of a Wii game that I actually did play through a legitimate range. It's actually a pretty cool game. I own several Mystery Dungeon games, and believe it or not, before recording, just like with the whole Platinum thing, I did not realize this, but I have three Mystery Dungeon games I'm going to show in this video as well as uh, the Platinum games. This is one of them. And yeah, I guess you could just call me a sucker for the Mystery Dungeon games. I would be a sucker for the Crazy Castle games if it wasn't for the fact they stopped making them. So there's that. I just like that kind of format. It's it's my jam. The story is very weird. It's kind of like a trip a little bit, but not as much as something like 13 Sentinels. Nothing beats that insanity. I think, I think the character designs are great and the actual Mystery Dungeon component is great. I wish Square Enix would put out more games like this that aren't either sequels to games that already exist or if if they are sequels just make them you know wholly fresh as opposed to just NFT bullshit or just remastering everything because that's all they put out that's good nowadays it's just either sequels to games like uh the world ends with you which i'm appreciative of or they just release remasters like the, the final fantasy uh crisis core uh re remaster as well as uh some other stuff but even then they don't always do that right for example like why the hell are the kingdom hearts games uh i, I, I get why three is cloud version but why are the other ones the cloud version? That makes no sense. You could have easily ported one and two to an actual in-engine thing that runs on Switch. You could easily have done it, but they didn't for some reason. I also like the Leg Legend of Mana game as well as the, the li li Live Alive, like 2D Masterpiece, whatever remake. I like all the retro ports, you know, covering all those SNES and NES games. But I just wish they would put out new shit or sequels to shit that we want. 
like in, besides something obvious like Parasite Eve, there's stuff like um, you know Brave Fencer Musashi that gets no love whatsoever. Oh yeah, and Enix stuff like Mischief Makers could use a sequel. That's that's Enix. Why not do something with that? Nothing changed about my face at all. Cruel King and the Great Hero. The Cruel King and the Great Hero. Yes, this is the next game. It is Baby's first RPG by NIS uh, America. Nipponichi Software, and they're kind of a dying business, honestly. The only way I could buy it new was to buy a limited edition. It came with a plush uh, that uh, got chewed up by my new puppy Emmett. He's a cute little boy. I might put a picture of him up on screen. Who knows? It got chewed up by him because he stole from my room and, he, and I didn't want to give it back. But more importantly, it came with uh, an art book. Let me just show the back. You'll know that it does come with a code, but it is an art book slash storybook. Let me show you some art. Let me show you some stories. So let's see if I can show you some, uh, some art right here. There you go. Let's show some story. Some story which is right here. Look at that. Uh, the game has great graphics. It comes with a dub turned on at first, which so does the Chocobo game. Chocobo only has the dub, but thankfully this does have a sub, but you have to uh, specifically turn it on like once you get past a certain point. So of course, you're gonna have to listen to the shitty English dub because for some reason, these companies think we wanna listen to these half-rate voice actors, except for the ones that I like, like the aforementioned Sung Won, or I also like Yong Ya, yeah, and I also like uh, Connor uh, C Dog. Uh, VA, so there you go. Hot tea. Pew, 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 pew. Let's move on to the next game. That being a game which has a little DVD insert. It's uh, Darius Burst EX Plus Another Chronicle. And if you saw my community post, which nobody did, uh, but if you saw it, I mentioned that I also pre-ordered from Strict Limited another promise that I broke. Uh, I've always wanted to play Darius Burst. I, it originally came out on the PSP first. It was actually first arcade, but then it was first ported to the PSP in Japan. Always too expensive to import it. And then, you know, it came out for PC and it was still way too expensive. And it came out for Switch, way too expensive. And, uh, but eventually I decided, you know what, screw it. I'll just buy the physical but then I realized there was a second physical that will go along with it. I'm like, I've already spent a certain amount of money. Might as well spend more money and end up costing more if I had just bought it digitally. So yeah, uh, whoop de freaking do I know I'm, I'm, I'm a silly boy, aren't I? The game is a shoot em up. I love shoot em ups. Uh, yep. Inin, by the way, is the company that published this. Which I found out that Indian's kind of just a shell company for uh, freaking Strictly Limited anyway. So all the time I was saying, Indian's great. Turns out I was supporting Strictly Limited anyway. So sucks for me. Yeah, the game itself is like a really, really wide uh, perspective based on the arcade. And uh, it's just like a boss rush sort of uh, shoot em up. It's not going to blow your socks off. It's not amazing, but it is quite a good shoot em up. But I haven't played much of it, and I will play more. I guarantee you I will. It also comes in a four player. I don't have friends, so. Never gonna play for a player, but that's that's uh that's just one little problem. Who cares about that? Am I right? Bada bing, bada boom. Let's move on to the next game. Next up is a game I have mentioned before. I mentioned that I ordered this from Limited Run. It took forever to come, but it finally came, and I'm coming. It's Demon Turf. Yes, indeed. And unlike the last limited run game I ordered, uh, this one came with a beefy manual, a freaking beefy one. There is a point of contention, I should say. Um, I ordered it and I was thinking it's probably gonna come with the Neon Splash game that came out alongside it. You know, almost around the same time as this this was being pre-ordered. So uh, I thought, you know, they're gonna include it. You know, that'd be a great package. No, they didn't. In fact, guess what? This came with the base version of the game. You have to install like a gigabyte pa a patch for this and they couldn't even bother to put in the other game they did it for dust they included dusk 82 or whatever it's like why couldn't they have incorporated freaking demon turf neon splash what the hell is wrong with those people and by the way i want to quickly mention something because i was supposed to mention this in earlier parts of the video but um when it comes to games like astral chain and the chocobo game i ordered them off of, of a site called surugaya.com surugaya.com is my new favorite website to order from japanese uh, for to order japanese games they're not perfect because some of the problems I have with them is that you can't find out what the games look like if they're new you know until you order them you have to order in bulk because the shipping is kind of expensive so typically you have to order at least like a hundred dollars worth of stuff in order to get good deals there's like they have these annoying ass stickers that you have to take off they're like GameStop quality stickers from back in the day if you remember that but yeah um there's there's some annoying caveats but at the same time sometimes you get brand new games and we even though they, they claim they're used because everything on the website is supposedly used comes quick for me it comes within a week the packages comes really nicely packed so when it comes to uh and there's gonna be other games i'm going to be showing but for now let's focus on the games in question 
Astral Chain was basically the equivalent of 3828. The uh, Chocobo game I got for around $34.08 if you do the math. And that game also goes for a decent chunk of change. This is not sponsored by them, this is just unpaid promotion. And if you're on sponsor block, uh, just mark this as unpaid promotion so you, so you can skip it. I don't give a shit. Anyway, Demon Turf is a platformer by one of my favorite developers for Braz. He made another game that I don't remember what it's called, but I'll put up on screen whatever it is. It's a fantastic game. It's one of the best games for its price range, in my opinion. Since then, he's made something with Platonic. It's like a physics-based, really sleek platformer. And I actually played the non-patch version. It was kind of shit. But then when I updated it, it felt fantastic. Seriously, this game has come quite a long way from its initial version. And uh, let's, let's actually get one more in there. Let's get another one because this is also a Surugaya game. This is Dragon Quest Treasures. Um, and uh, it's it's like a little, you know, action RPG slash sort of collectathon sort of thing. And uh, it's nice. I actually like it. Um, I know I was crapping on Square Enix for not doing anything new, but this is not exactly new, but I do like it. Yeah, it's like way cheap when compared to how much it costs, you know, to get in America. Um, it's like 20, 29, 71 is how much I end up paying for it. If you do the math. Uh, this game is this game is quite nice. Uh, the graphics are actually not that bad. Um, they're actually nice, believe it or not. Um, yeah, um, this one had an option where I couldn't watch the opening cutscene without there being a shitty dub at, at first, and that's really nice. And of course, they still have the crappy translation of like, oh, it's Uzabella or freaking uh, Goober. I don't know, it's some bullshit like that where it's like, God, it's like, it, why does every slime have to have a dumb, cutesy name? It's like, geez, Louise, like you couldn't just go off what the literal Japanese translation is, or at least change the translation if you're. Uh, uh, if you're not playing the dub, which they literally even say in the game, they're like, if you switch to a different language, it might the subtitles might not be indicative of what they're actually saying. It's like basically saying like we didn't bother switching the subtitles because we're lazy uh, publishers who publish it in America. So fuck you. So yeah, that's another rant over. I don't know why. I guess I'm just kind of ranty today. So there you go. Next up is fight crab, fight crab, fight crab, fight crab. Yes, indeed. It is a uh... Fight Crab by Mastiff, published by them, developed by Kalapa Games. And it's kind of like a chip post game, equivalent to like a rage game. But I love it. I love it dearly. And it is indeed a game. And this does not have a physical in America. This is a Japanese exclusive physical. I bought it in America though. I got it from a seller in America who had a decent price for it. Uh, he actually shipped it in like a like a collector's little box that like people use to preserve things. It, it was in really nice condition. He, he took really good care of it. I love Fight Crab. If you've seen uh, some of my uh, second channel, shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, look up Mads Mitski if you want to see footage of this. The game is in English. There's only one game that I, I own today that's from Japan. Japan or Asia that is uh, not in English and I'll tell you what it is because it's coming up soon and it really irritates me because it was lied to. It's one to two players, kinda. And Mastiff also published one of my favorite games, uh, in my opinion very underrated game, but it's called Guru Min uh, A Monstrous Adventure or something like that. They didn't make it, Nihon Falcon made it, but Mastiff published it and uh, good on them for doing it because they rule. I like them, and they also publish this. But it's not entirely crabs. You can play as lobsters and other crustaceans. So there you go. Meh. There's a lot of weapons too. You can shoot a gun, so that's all I need to know. Final Fantasy X and X-2. This is a Korean copy. You wanna look at this? This is in Korean. This is a different type of moon language. Maybe it's sun language, I don't know. Yeah, and it's in English, which uh, someone should add somewhere to some sort of wiki because again the Korean games uh, the Korean games that come out in Korea it's, it's very under documented if they actually come out in English or not they're not the same exactly as Asian releases but this does come in English and it's the same freaking game as the Japanese version being that it comes with the entire game built in without a shitty patch that gives you 10 to uh not on the cartridge because square enix fucking sucks bro final fantasy 10 is pretty good 
good. I actually was not a fan of Final Fantasy when I was younger. I tried playing Final Fantasy VI and I got bored with it. I think the only RPG I liked as a kid was Earthbound and obviously Pokemon. But as I've gotten older, I've become quite the RPG guy. I thought now's the time to play Final Fantasy X. And it's kind of nostalgic even though I never played it. Cause I guess because it reminds me of Kingdom Hearts because there was that part in Kingdom Hearts where you do play with Final Fantasy X characters. And it's, it's around the same time, similar similar graphics i think the same engine right um yeah it, it's it's pretty cool um to see game that i was missing out on although i've been told that 10 2 kind of ruins the ending of 10 so who knows whether or not i'll play it i probably will that's how i roll i, I like playing games that other people don't like you know because i'm a contrarian i'm mary contrary or i guess gary contrary the music is great and uh there's some, there's some music in here I forgot was from this game, you know? Uh, quite the varied soundtrack throughout the game. Yeah, I think this is Nobu, Nobuo Uematsu, which is pretty cool. And the and the, uh, and the uh, remaster quality is quite good. The pre-rendered cutscenes in this game haven't aged a day. They still look freaking fantastic. Quality package overall. Next up is La Mulana 1 and 2, and this is the game in question where I was lied to. Some jackass in the comments of a PlayAsia page said that it was in English when the actual release said that it wasn't in English. Yet I bought it, and I bought it. I bought it both figuratively and literally. It came with the collector's edition. Now let me show you what the collector's edition came with. It's quite the package. Let me pull up my Suru Gaia graph because indeed I did buy it off of Suru Gaia, and I paid the equivalent to uh, how much did I pay exactly? Uh, 38.94, which is actually really cheap although ideally i would have liked it to be in english the games themselves are pretty much like old pc style you know spunky but before spunky came out kind of like a thousand and one spikes you ever played that game it's pretty freaking cool it's kind of like a castlevania game actually is a more apt comparison but let me show you what it came with i'm not gonna say the name of this company because i'm afraid it's gonna get me canceled see that right there can't say that but yeah this is the little uh, instruction booklet which is unreadable to me in more ways than one because if you look over here it's freaking sheet music which i'm sure somebody could read but i can't because i don't know sheet music either it's not a language i don't understand and also came with a uh, six cd soundtrack yes indeed quite the overkill there's a lot of tracks on here and i and i ripped them all and i've used them all legally on my phone because that's legal people as long as you don't share it you can use it however the hell you want keep your own personal library do it don't use any websites that are illegal unlike me i would never do that yes use them uh cds to your advantage i think actually the digital version of one of them is included because i don't think it's actually one and two packaged in physically i think one of them actually is something you have to download from the eShop, which makes it even more disappointing. Like, what the frick, dude? They're both not even that big of a package. Why couldn't you just include them in a cartridge together? So this is the ultimate ripoff. Well, not really, though, because I, I love the soundtrack, so that was worth it, I think. I mean, on top of the game being good, so there's that. But there's certain mechanics that I don't exactly get because they're not in English, so, you know, that's kind of a nuisance. Yeah, I mean, I'm, if I'm being real which I ain't nothing but real. It's Metal Max Xeno Reborn, which Metal Max Returns is actually a game on uh, the Super Nintendo that came out in Japan. I believe there was uh, Metal Max on Famicom, I think. I could be wrong. I'll put it up on screen if I'm right or wrong. This is actually a series, and this is a game that, the reason why I bought it, because it reminded me of a PS2 game, of like a classic PS2 GameCube style game, like a Japanese AA kind of production. And I think it's really nice. It's an RPG with a tank. It makes it quite unique. I actually learned about it from Metal Jesus Rocks, which normally I don't really like watching his videos anymore because he doesn't know shit about games and he sucks at them. But uh, he exposed me to it. And uh, and I like his friend Reggie, even though Reggie's, Reggie's videos are actually dog shit. But I like his gaming opinions more. He usually tends to be more right than freaking Metal Jesus. It, it, it kind of reminds me of Septera Core. You ever played that? Anyone ever played that? Reminds me visually of that. That's a very specific reference, but if, you, if you've seen the game, you'll agree with me. Published by PQ Games? PQube Games? And uh, developed, I think, by Katakawa Games. Okay, sounds fair. Oh shit, I just realized. Look, if you look right here, there's a little, uh, you, actually, you can't see it because of the crappy camera, but there's like a little flap that's sticking up here due to the way it's been stored. Which I think it came like that because I ordered it from GameStop and it was supposedly new, 
but it clearly wasn't new because it was unsealed. It was just new, you know, we've never sold it before, essentially, which is like new, but GameStop doesn't give discounts for that because fuck them, they suck. But I ordered from them anyway, so what do I know, right? Uh, next up is Mighty Goose. Mighty Goose is a uh, freaking limited run game again. I know, crappy limited run. I'm ordering from them yet again, but I've already pled my case. There's also Playism, and uh, this is Blast Mode and MP2. Playism is definitely a publisher. Blast Mode and MP2 must be developers, I guess. This is a game, it's like Contra or like uh, Metal Slug. Actually, it's more like Contra. It's straight up, it's not really like Metal Slug. It's just straight up like Contra. With a, with a goose with with uh, robo arms and uh, it's your typical running gun affair. It's uh, it, graphically it's it's like every single game of this style. You know whether it be bomb chicken or iconoclasts or what what have you. It, it's in the same style as that. And uh, it's uh, it's a funny goose game. Goose go Rah! and that's funny. You know. But this actually does have a beefy manual, like a legit manual, the one that comes inside the game. And uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool, you know, I'm pretty happy about that. Never gonna read it. Next up in this adventure that we're going on is Near Automata, the end of Yorha edition. And uh, this is a fantastic port by Platinum. I don't necessarily know if Platinum developed this port, but if they did, they did a freaking wonderful job. And, uh, and of course it comes with uh, your typical bullshit inside, but it comes with an alternate cover. Look at that, isn't that cool? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty freaking amazing. It's just like, you know, it's your typical Platinum Affair, but it's also got that spin of being uh, a Drakengard style game where it's got all those wacky wild turns and twists and whatnot. You know, obviously it's a sequel to the original game, Nier, and the Nier Replicant, you know, that came out in America, localized for the first time recently. I don't like the deal. DLC though. I don't like the fact that they've uh, shoehorned in a bunch of DLC like microtransaction bullshit throughout the game. That's not my biggest uh, biggest thing that I'm into. But it's it's what you have to expect with modern gaming, you know. Music as always uh, with sort of uh, Nier and uh, Dragon Guard games is fantastic. It's what you expect, you know, from the the, the mastermind behind it all. I forget his name. I'll put it up uh, right here. Oh yeah, I got a GameStop, and it's another one where it was supposedly new, but it was on the shelf, and it was it was a copy that was open for people to touch and put their grubby hands on. So it wasn't exactly new, it's just never been played, I guess, what they actually mean. Weep, 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 weirdo shit, creepy sex shit, coming up. It's Omega Labyrinth Life. Now, I literally bought this game not knowing it was a creepy sex game. I'm being serious. I'm being dead serious. I just saw it was a mystery dungeon game and I wanted to play it. I thought it was Toho. I literally thought it was Toho. This is a creepy sort of like, mess with the women's breasticles and then go on an adventure in a roguelike RPG sort of mystery dungeon game. And then build the garden and whatnot. Don't forget about the creepy sex shit. They, they literally got the cast on the back of all the actresses just so you can look them up and stalk them. Ew. Makes me, makes me squirm, dude. Makes me literally squirm. But that's the game. That's the game in question. It is a uh, freaking um, D3 published game, so you know what you're looking at, you know, considering that's pretty much all they do. Besides the Simple series, all they do nowadays is just release creepy sex shit. So I should have expected it, but... Gameplay is alright, you know, I actually like the gameplay quite a bit, but I'm gonna sink kind of lower into my chair now. Sorry guys, I'll see you later. Pac-Man! 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 It's Pac-Man, everybody. It's Pac-Man World Repack. What is up, guys? It's Pac-Man time. It's time to get packed in your back baby yes indeed yeah it's it's actually a really good remake um i never played the original i never played the sequel and never played the third game but i'm always a fan of the pac-man i like pac-man i like miss pac-man which is owned by at games fuck you at games I like pac attack i like pac-mania i like pac-man 2 the one with the where he's an asshole I like the pac-man platformer pac-land i like all sorts of Pac-Man games. I like Pac-Man, the Battle Royale. That one was cool. What well, lasted? Yeah, um, this game pretty faithful, based on what I've heard. Pretty faithful to the original. I have gotten past the first level, and that's about it. So Pac-Man, you never see it coming.
Yes, it's Persona 5 Royal. I mentioned earlier it would never come out. I, I, was, I was wrong. It came out on PC and it came out on Switch and I freaking bought it, baby. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Now I get to play the first game and, and had, know exactly what happens because they play Persona 5 Strikers, but I don't care. It's freaking wonderful. I love Persona 5. It's freaking great, man. Uh, Joker's my dude. Joker's my dude, man. Dude, man, boy. He's freaking wonderful. And I and I'm having so much fun playing this game. I can't wait to play more of it and play more Persona 5 Strikers, baby. Sega has done a wonderful job bringing this over to Switch or forcing Atlas to bring this over to Switch. Because you know Atlas wouldn't do it on their own. It's certainly Royale. Now, can we get a physical of Persona 4, please? Thank you. Oh okay, yeah, the music, the music. Mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful characters oh man there's so many to choose from one of them will be my waifu so don't you don't you worry your pretty little head too many waifu will ruin life you it will it's probably the blonde one let's be real even though the cat is obsessed with her he can fuck off how about that change the world my final message goodbye <laughs> My God, what the fuck just happened? It's almost as if I changed the world and my final message was goodbye. And what's this in my hand? I happen to be holding the next game in the collection, Pokemon Legends Arseface. I mean Arceus, I mean Arceus. Goofs and gaffs aside, yes, it's Pokemon Legends Arseface. Yes, uh, despite the goofs and gaffs, that is the actual name of this game. Anybody saying it's it's Arceus or Arceus is wrong, it's actually Arseface. Graphically, it's not as bad as people say it is, especially compared to Scarlet and Violet. Now, it is just basically a GameCube game, essentially, or a Wii game, but that's okay. You know, like I said in previous parts of this video, as long as graphics aren't terror bad, I don't exactly care, and the graphics in, in this case are not terror bad, as opposed to, like, Sword and which are pretty bad, but and performance is just fine. I, I have no issues, so they didn't fuck it up this time. Um, yeah, I like uh, the customization mechanic. Uh, and oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this is again a Suru Gaia purchase, and I purchased it for $33.35, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, it, it came like new, not exactly new, but it came pretty pristine, and I think that's worth the money I paid for it. There's going to be two more Surugaya um, purchases, so look out for those. I like the format of going around just like throwing balls and like getting to battles or just straight up catching things just by throwing them. I like I like the idea of um, having to go from like area to area and exploring, having free reign to go pretty much wherever you want. You know, obviously there's barriers with Pokemon that are too powerful. I like the fact that you can also skip things that you don't have to be stuck in a bullshit tutorial if you don't want to be, which is funny because it's still not ideal. There's still there's still the fact that there's some stupid tutorials to begin with but things like like ultra sun ultra moon were ridiculous so in comparison to that you know that's a cakewalk I don't like the fact that not all Pokemon are in the game, but I just have to accept that at this point because Pokemon Company have made it clear that they're not going to put every single Pokemon in, in a game ever again. And uh, as long as they put quality games like this out that are distinct enough from the original Pokemon game that are not like supposedly mainline entries like Scarlet and Violet that are bug laden and full of holes, I don't exactly care anymore. I've given up on that uh, battle. That's not a hill I'm willing to die on. Nintendo, I don't know if I would want them to own the majority stake they're pretty much a plurality right now I, I don't know if i'd want them to own a majority stakes just for the simple fact that you know i'm sure they'd fuck it up somehow even worse than pokemon company is doing it right now but maybe i'm wrong i don't know but hey they just raised their employees uh pay despite uh profits going down so based we're on the home stretch, people. Let's get through this, okay? Next up is Shin Megami Tensei 5, also by Atlas. I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of these games have either been published by Square Enix or Atlas, and in turn published by Sega. As you know, I am a big RPG guy now, and this is no exception. I love the Shin Megami Tensei franchise. I wish I could play 1, 2, if, as well as uh, 4. I wish I could play those on Switch, especially 1, 2, and if in English, considering they are on the, on the Japanese switch online SNES service so it'd be nice if I could actually play them the originals but instead I'm stuck with five I know, I know every game's kind of uh, an anthological but I would like to be able to play the entire series in order and this is this is actually a decent 
Shin Megami Tensei game. I can't tell you if it's the best because I really like to play 4, but I can't. 4 is also locked only to the 3DS and has not been ported, even though it has no right not to be. It should be. Uh, this is the standard edition, not the Steelbook edition. I, I really wanted the Steelbook edition, but I couldn't find it, so I settled on this. I like the character designs. I like the, the main character's character design more than I like 3's. I think 3's is kind of generic. I like the opening of the game, and uh, I think it's kind of cool that you're not exactly you know, a slave or like a uh, or like a demon or you're not like you actually become like a god like a cool demigod guy as opposed to like a cursed demon or whatever like you actually kind of keep a lot of your humanity in this game which I really like. Although based on what it says it says an elusive story filled with tragic choices so I'm assuming you can lose your humanity more and more. I always kind of find it doom and gloom every time the world ends in these games. Because Persona, you save the world. This game, it's like you pretty much just survive in the world. As with all the other ones. I actually think it looks not too much better than Nocturne. Next up, I'm pulling out the big guns. Yes, I'm doing the last Mystery Dungeon game, as well as the second to last Tsurugaya game. It's uh, Shiren the Wanderer, and uh, it's with some sort of subtitle I don't exactly know. I, I can tell you what it means in uh, Japanese, and I can tell you what it means in English. I'll put both on screen. It came in a collector's edition. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to keep the box, but of course, Tsurugaya put like a nasty sort of sticker over the box, so basically gave me no choice but to throw it away. But uh, Shida and the Wanderer basically cost $31.89, which I think is a really good price for what this is. And I think it was not new. I'm pretty sure the, um, La Mulana was new. And I think also uh, Pac-Man was new, which I forgot to mention. And I think, that, I think the next game also came in new as well. Well, new-ish, I'll explain. But here is the game itself. This just has a plain old white cover on the inside, but to make up for it, they came with an art book slash, uh, well, it's just really an art book, actually. It's not really a manual at all. It just straight up is an art book with, with cool little art like this and uh, like this and like uh this and it's uh this game is uh, is uh published and developed by spike chunsoft this is actually the uh second spike chunsoft game that i own the first one being katana kami which is actually a, a, a uh, exclu an exclusive Japanese physical. This one is not. This one did get a crappy limited run release, but I decided not to buy that because this one comes in English anyway, so there's literally no point. And this is actually a remake of the original uh, Shida and the Wanderer, which is the second Mystery Dungeon sort of game uh, on SNES. Now it says 5 on it, like it says 5 plus. I mean, to me, it plays like not too dissimilar to the SNES game, which I have played legally on my legal Super Famicom with a legal, some sort of fucking I don't know ROM that I dumped from an actual cartridge onto an EverDrive LEGALLY! This is the last time I'm doing that joke I swear to god. I like this game in particular although I kind of wish they would have uh, ported as well the uh, the Wii game of Shira and the Wanderer. Uh, that one is actually uh, very cool and I think it, it deserves its own port. And uh, I believe after this next game we will be done- oh. I gotta be careful with this freaking pile that I developed. Oh shit, you just heard some of it. With Japanese imports, and we only have one more Asian game to cover after that. So let's get to it. The next game is the last Platinum game as well. It alphabetically came right before the last Mystery Dungeon game and the last Pseudo Guy, yeah. but it is a game called Soul Cresta, and I, ha and I have the limited edition box. You know, some damage on the uh, actual paint. Believe it or not, it's glow in the dark. I found that out while I was going to bed one night and I had it on my shelf. Believe it or not, I taped this because uh, the original tape came off. You can see it kind of rubbed off right here. And uh, it has the rating and whatnot. And uh, if you flip it over, it has like some artwork. And on the front, it actually has nothing when you until you finish the artwork with this little thing right here. I mean, Japanese games and CDs tend to do that, which I really find annoying. Inside, you get sort of a super deluxe sort of instruction booklet with, uh, you know, some artwork and whatnot. It's pretty cool. And you also get a card, a card. While I'm at it, I might as well show you the uh, Demon Turf card that I uh, that came with the game as well. So here is in question the Super Deluxe Series 1 sort of platinum card. Here is my limited run card for Demon Turf. 
Yep, pretty cool card. And it's a gold, which other ones are silver. I don't know what the hell that means. There's a few things I forgot to mention before we move on. It comes with a manual. Not exactly the beefiest manual, but certainly not pathetic. And I forgot to mention how the gameplay is. Let's go through that really quickly. The game is a shoot 'em up. It's actually visually not very good. But once you turn on the pixelated filter, it actually becomes quite the visually pleasing game. The game's hard. Um, the game has this really complicated system of like switching ships into like various shapes and like trying to move in certain ways. It's like really overly complicated and uh, it's not exactly the best to play, but I do enjoy it. Now I did pay 4078 on Surugaya for uh, Soul Crescent, another thing I forgot to talk about. I don't think that's actually a good deal. I kind of wish I paid a cheaper price for it. Out of all the ones that I've paid for, that one is one that I don't exactly like the fact I paid that much for. Let's move on to the next game, which is Windjammers 2. Yet another limited run. The actual developer is .emu, and Windjammers is, I believe, a uh, SNK property. Man, uh, Windjammers 2 is fun as hell. I wish people actually played online, because I remember when the demo came out on Steam, people were playing online. It was super fun to play. Ran people on online it'd be a great game to play with friends too if i had any and uh windjammers 2 is hard I'm not very good at it but i have managed to beat the story once on easy mode and i've gotten decently far on normal mode but not far enough to beat the game the graphics are good i don't like the voices for a lot of the characters i, I think a lot of them are ill-fitting and very annoying and repetitive this is another game i have featured on my clips channel Shh, don't tell anybody but it's Mads Mitski. yeah i'm giving it a double shout out this video I featured it in a video where I showed random clips from my Switch. And this one is another one that comes with a manual, manual squad hype. I, I don't think I've actually ever played the original Windjammers, so I know there is a physical for that, where you can buy that, and uh, or maybe there's not a physical, I'll put it on screen if there is. But I know it, it has been ported to modern consoles and I, I haven't played it, so I can't tell you whether that's any good. But I know Windjammers 2 is good, so there's that. And it kind of reminds you of Lethal League, but the original Wind Windjammers was actually one of the inspirations for Lethal League. Second to last is a game, another game with a manual. And uh, like with all uh, NAS releases, or at least most of them, also comes with a code that I can't show you. Thankfully, it is co covered up. Yes, it is Yuru Kill the Calumniation Games. Not Calumnation, which is a word, but Calumniation. What the fuck does that mean? It's also by Izanagi Games. If you look inside, it comes with a manual, which Manual Squad hype for the last time today. It's actually a mini art book. It's not a manual, so mini art book hype how about that it's a danganronpa clone except for instead of you playing a like phoenix wright segment instead you play a shoot 'em up segment kind of annoying it comes with a large patch on launch which is not good the story is quite silly i tend to sort of skip the details which gets me in trouble because you're supposed to pay attention because there is a segment where it, where it makes the shoot 'em up easier then gives you more lies depending on what answers you get right and uh, i play on on normal mode because hard is just way too hard i think it's called like lunatic it's kind of based off the whole bullet home idea but i just suck at it so much i I had to lower the difficulty, which you can't can't raise up once once you've lowered it. That's okay. And it was just way too insanely hard, and I got so frustrated with it. But once I lowered the difficulty, the game became a lot better to play. I think this is actually underrated. Your Yuru kill is underrated, and I think it deserves more love. And finally, presenting the last game in this video, performing the national anthem. Please take off your hats and shove a finger up your ass for the zombie national anthem. It's Zombie Army 4 Dead War. It's a Chinese release slash Hong Kong. Yes, it's uh, the last Asian release of this video and the last game of this video. It's alphabetically the last one. I played a decent chunk of this. I actually got pretty far, started raging and decided to take a map Massive break. I haven't played it ever since. Um, this actually comes with a lot of DLC that I can't buy because it's on the Hong Kong eShop. And uh, it's also freaking expensive as hell, the DLC. I only installed the free one, that being the Left 4 Dead one, which thank God that one's free because it's my favorite. I like it. Um, I know some people are more of the, of the Army Trilogy as opposed to the fourth game due to the mechanics they've introduced, but I quite like it. Um, but I'm constantly running low on health and I wish there was more health pickups. It's just my opinion, but I know some people might disagree. The graphics, oh my god, the graphics are really good. It is like a fantastic port by Rebellion. Rebellion nailed it out of the freaking park, man. It is great, great port. I mean, honestly, it's like console quality, like last gen console quality port, like PS4. 
Xbox One, stuff like that. And I, and I own the, the Army Trilogy on uh, on PC, and uh, I played a decent chunk of that. But I, I pr probably got around, around the same amount of uh, distance in the Army Trilogy as I have gotten in Army 4. I just noticed on the back, back of this, when it comes to uh, the rating, one of the things I mentioned is that it has ghosts. Ghouls or zombies count as ghosts. That's specifically a ghost label because China hates ghosts for some reason. <laughs> that's why it's 18 plus, which it should be, but that's really funny that it's a specific ghost label. So I guess that's it. That's all I gotta say. Kind of a silly note to end on, but them's the breaks. Anyway, uh, I'll see you all in a few months when I upload again. Bye bye!